to prove the theorem I will discuss today. So just as a reminder, if you have an automorphism invariant closure operator on uh, some L structure, um, it's uh, disjointifying. Uh, if and only if for all for all A and B and C for all finite A for all finite B and C containing A. Uh, there's an automorphism fix, that fixes everything in A, sending B to B prime such that now, two things hold. The closure of B prime intersect uh, C is contained in the closure of A, and then the opposite closure of C intersect B prime is contained in the closure of A. I don't I don't think it's overlaying uh so this is uh what we talked about last week. Um, and uh, to, to motivate the, the result we'll talk about this week, I uh, also want to recall G involves H if and only if there's a closed subgroup uh, G0 of G and uh, pi from G0 to H, just continuous. Uh, surjective homomorphism. So uh, if G involves H, then this uh, uh, Mackey-Horth theorem says that, uh, I forget which order I put the classification strength, but basically, G is, is has more classification strength than H. So every uh, every orbital constellation induced by H can be bro reduced to uh, an orbital constellation induced by G uh, on Polish spaces. I remember the There must be something that says. The closure operator can't be with everything at all, always. What what is that? Yeah, so that was the non-trivial. So every every uh L structure has a like canonical, like minimal disjointifying closure operator, but it might be that the entire structure is the closure of the empty set. So in that right, case, yeah, it's so trivial. So if it's non-trivial, it means oh, oh I see non-trivial <laughs> Yeah, so that that was uh the non-trivial meant that uh, M is not the closure of, of the empty set. And uh, if, if closure, the closure operator is disjointifying, this actually is equivalent to saying that uh, M is not the closure of any finite, any finite subset. So if, if G involves H, then uh, we have a very natural way of lifting actions of H to G. Every action of H can be, is there's a bro reduction to an action of G. And the question is, to what extent is there a converse? It's a very natural question. 
the question if if g as strong classification strength in h uh, must uh, g involve h uh, well the answer is obviously no because uh, if if Right, if, if H is compact, then every action of H, continuous action on of H on a Polish space is reducible to uh, equality on the reals. So this would tell us H has is no stronger than the trivial group. And there's there's other uh, counterexamples we can find. Uh, but maybe, uh, maybe if we weaken this, must there be a, a small normal subgroup N of, of H such that G involves H? Maybe there's some notion of small where this is true. H H mod N. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. May or or maybe there's a large sub subgroup of H such that G must involve that subgroup. Uh, so if 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 this had a positive question, this would trivialize like many decades of work on Polish group actions, like anti-classification results. Um, uh, it would probably trivialize the like fourth turbulence theory. Uh, so the, the pessimistic views is probably not true. Um, but there will be a point in, in the proof that I present today where it seems like it would you would be able be able to get this and uh i'll try to say something coherent about why uh things don't seem that so nice yeah i mean you could say maybe uh like small could be and is compact or something in which case, if H is compact, it's just yeah. 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 I think that that seems like a, a reasonable candidate uh, for notion of small. Um, but we are able to get something, uh, something like so. So I'll, I'll restate the, the list of equivalences. And again, this is just for um, automorphism groups. Um, it's it's likely I think it's gonna be generalized to arbitrary Polish groups, um, but a lot of the tools used are sort of model theoretic. So the following are equivalent. Uh, G involves this infinity to it exists this, uh, disjointifying automorphism invariant, locally finite, non-trivial closure operator. Uh, three, there's this rank, which I very briefly defined. Um, I, I will probably come back to it at some point today. Um, oh, uh, is, is not an ordinal. So it does not have a nice notion of rank. Uh, and the last one is there is an action of G uh, which classifies equality plus. And there's this uh, fifth 
another technical notion that intermediate technical notion that I'll uh, need to use. Uh, and so I'll put in quotes because I, I don't want to emphasize it, but there's a nice assignment of supports. Um, so Spencer, you're just telling me about this uh, notion of projective indiscernibles. It could be, I think this is probably, like maybe that would be the right term to use here. This is where there might be some uh, So, yeah, so th this is a case where we have uh, the existence of a Borel reduction and we're able to, uh, we're able to yield some information about the group. Uh, equality plus is an this is an action of um, s infinity. So it's, we're going to find basically a, a, you know, g, g involves s infinity. So this is a a, a positive example where the converse uh, does hold, um, and uh, I think it, it might be helpful to think like as I discuss this. If if you have a different group here, well, there would be some way to get the G involves this other group instead of this infinity, um, and think about why it doesn't seem like that. Well, you can conclude that. So I'll, I'll define this this notion of uh, assignment of supports. And I should say, so the way that this proof is going to go, it's going to go four to five and then five to two. Just uh, last week, I proved this. And some, and I spoke a little bit about some equivalence between these two. So I proved this. Uh, yeah. So today I'm proving four to five and five to two. And uh, it might seem that maybe you can uh, go directly from five to one, in which case, if you can, then it's likely that you'd have a positive answer to this question. Um, but there are, there are difficulties there. So an assignment of supports is a function from the finite subsets of M to Finite subsets of omega. It, this should be uh, familiar uh, if you uh, are familiar with um, choice choiceless model theory. Um, although I'm not sure if I use the same no, no, notion, same terminology. So we're assigning a notion of support to every every finite, basically every finite tuple. So the support of the empty set should be empty. If A is a subset of B, then the support of A should be contained in the support of B. And finally, uh, uh, there's some A such that the support of A is not empty set. So this is a non-triviality condition. Uh, and, and what to keep in mind here is, okay, so imagine we have this Borel reduction. Somehow you can uh, gather information about like values at tuples in, in M from, in, from the reals uh, in this orbit. And that's what's happening here. So. A, A is a tuple from, from M. And the support is saying, like, how much of the or orbit, the S infinity orbit, do you need to know to, in order to gather non trivial information about this, this tuple? Um, okay, so supports is just this, these things. 
uh, your non-trivial if, if you satisfy this, and then niceness. The niceness. It's the following condition. So this is a kind of um, uh, maybe yeah. This is just some uh, maybe indiscernibility is the right term to use here. I, I just used the word nice because I didn't know what else to use. So for all A and B finite, uh, such that B uh, contains A, uh, two uh, supports V and U, such that B contains U, and this and the soup of B is V and the soup of A soup support. Support of A is U. Then uh, for every uh, V prime of the same type as V over U. Okay, what do I mean by same type? There's no structure, so. This just this this just means the uh, cardinality of v prime minus u is cardinality v minus u. But you can imagine maybe this uh, you have maybe instead of omega we have n or some n is some other structure and and so we have some structure on the supports then maybe you'd want this would this would it wouldn't be silly to yeah to use this notation here. But there's no there's no structure, so being of the same type, it's just a cardinality thing. So for all v prime, so you have, yeah. Yes. So this this just means there's a permutation of omega which fixes everything in u and sends v, v to v prime. So yeah, and any other possible like. Support you can find a b b prime. There's just a b prime, the same type as b over a, such that the support of b prime is b prime. So it's just a kind of an indiscernibility of the supports. So any bijection between n and omega would be something satisfying all this, right? Any bijection between m and omega. Uh, no. no. I mean, this, this is the set on the right strong, right? So you just draw with the finite subsets. That's supposed to turn into a structure preserving map on m. Right, any any bijection you have between the B and B prime that's of the right shape, there is a structure preserving map on M. But he doesn't say anything about the structure of the Bs. I mean, those are just finite subsets of M, as far as I can uh, But there's this isomorphism condition. Yeah. Oh, 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 so where's the isomorphism? There's a. Oh, this, so this means there's an automorphism sending B to B prime, oh, fixing everything in right, Uh, so I, I plan to try to explain why uh, niceness, uh, like the uh, nice or indiscernible sign of supports is not enough to just get G involved system infinity. Because you, you might think, well, okay, if you have such a thing, you fix a permutation of omega and then by some back and forth argument, just try to build an automorphism of M, like strategy. So uh, fix permutation of omega and find i and not m such that for all a and m, uh, 
65. Um, if you look at the support of high A, you get sigma support A. I mean, there's a natural, yeah, sorry. The light that you have a expanse, right? So you have this uh, permutation that you're going to plug in and the, the thing that fixes the UV over. Right. So, so I mean, the, the, uh, what you'd want, you'd want to do is suppose, okay, you have, you build pi by a back and forth argument. So you have, a zero and you send it to B zero, such that okay, the support of A zero P pi P pi uh, sigma, you get the support of B zero. And then you find pick some B one. And uh, okay, the support of B zero B one should let's let's say it's uh, larger than support of B zero. So support. B0, B1 is strictly bigger than support of B0. Then you want to find a A1. Of the same, such that this A0, A1 is the same type of B0, B1, such that the, the support of A1 minus support uh, A0, uh, a0 a1 is increases in size in the same amount that you have there actually you just have you know we want the support of a0 a1 to be the same size as the support of b0 b1 once we do that then we can apply niceness to move a1 to find to some maybe we call this a a1 star you can find some a1 such that the once it's the right size, you can move move find a new a1 such that the support is what you'd want for if you apply sigma. You, so the supports uh, are the, yeah. The a's are on the m side, right? Yes. Uh, but you've got the property on the on, on the omega side. Uh, right, the, the B prime, right. isn't that? That happens. Yes. Happens, yeah. okay, so. One problem seems to be that your um, your size morphism condition fixes some finite piece of information rather than suspending some partial on morphism. Uh, I'm not sure if this addresses your question, uh, but one thing I should have mentioned is um, M, we, we're going to assume M is ultra homogeneous. So every partial automorphism gets extended to full autom automorphism. You, you can always take M and just make it ultra homogeneous without changing its automorphism group. So why not? So why doesn't the argument work? Uh, it, the argument doesn't work. Is doesn't seem to work. I mean, maybe uh, uh, is uh, it's not clear that just because you have a partial automorphism from a zero to b zero, that you can uh, find an a one such that the support increases the same amount that the support increases here when you add b one. If you can get that, you're fine. Just in terms of cardinality. Yes, cardinality. You could add a few requirements, but I guess that's cheating. Uh, that's not going to give you what you want. Uh, but why, why yeah. not? It seems like the A, in night, the capital A in niceness, could be some structure that contains like A0 and B0. Uh, oh, and A, yeah, A here would be. B should be A0, B0, and B1. 
uh, actually, uh, we would apply niceness by a zero just be a and b would be maybe I should use c and d so there's no confusion by so this would be a this would be b oh you're suggesting I'm do something a different else. application of nice or a different application of a different property than niceness. <laughs> Look, aren't the little bees on there? They're, they're the big mouse and they're made, but they're not even in the structure. No, it's, it's an automorphism of the mouse, right? So that there's okay, so every, everything, so, everything inside. Oh, everything here is an M. Oh, right, that's why I don't. Okay, so, so you're not, but how are you using? Yeah, any this entire all thing is sort of M. Then you, you're not using supports. Uh, the supports we're kind of yeah. auxiliary thing that is supposed to be helping you continue with your. Right, but there's both maps from M to Omega. If you go from M to M, you've got nothing telling you. So we, we fixed the we fixed the permutation of supports and we're building an automorphism of M. So we want okay. pi to go from M, M to M. We, we want an automorphism. So the sigma is on the omega uh, side and you want to copy it over on the M side. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see. So you're oh, but then you are taking the A0 to the B0 to see what sigma does to it. Uh, yeah, so so we're assuming that uh, you know we started we found a zero and b zero such that so far this this you know the I, the induction recursive whatever like induction hypothesis is, is satisfied and we want to extend this partial automorphism so eventually it'll be a full automorphism. It seems like the the a capital A from niceness wants to be something bigger. Fixing, fixing a fixing capital a in the definition of niceness probably wants to represent extending some partial automorphism or some automorphism of a which you built you know, the thing that you built is not right uh yeah you, you make an interesting yeah, your property and I'm right. <laughs> yeah yeah it, i mean these, these are interesting uh suggestions in there uh i, I i'm not sure if i if i can uh appropriately address them in this environment uh sure it, it, it's very possible i mean it would be that some i mean i guess you'd want a to also have a zero b zero right yeah. and b And then, but like okay. the, the map, the thing you're trying to extend is not the identity on capital A. It's a it's an automorphism of capital A. Yeah, I I think that well, I don't think that's going to solve the problem, which is we need to we need to be able to extend the support in the same size as here, and I don't see how that. Anything, anything like that would would solve solve that problem. It's supposed to just be given to me by sigma, right? So the, the... before we even think about sigma, we just we, we just want we want the so let's split, suppose the size of the support of B zero is uh, one, and this is uh, support the size of this is two. And okay, because we had a partial automorphism that works, this has to be size one. And we want to find um, A1, which has the same type over A0 as B1 has over B1, B1 has over B0, such that the size of this is, is two. But I think that, that sounds already too complicated. Yeah. If you can't do that, then niceness solves everything because you can just move move a one so that the support is is yeah. what you need. So I I would expect that niceness allows you to move b one directly, or the you know the right variation of niceness, like b b has b one in it, and then the conclusion of niceness tells you where to map b one. Um. The <laughs> we can we can let you go on with your talk. I don't I don't want to. Okay, I'll have to I'll have to think about that. Yeah, that's... Uh, but I also think that I'm talking about a property that's not quite nice. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yeah, I'm definitely interested to, to uh, yeah. This, just to better understand what's going on with the problem, is there an easy example of uh, one of these assignments of supports which doesn't preserve cardinality? So if we have the uh, I mean if we have this um the the coloring that we we um, constructed in order in order to prove one last time, save some coloring, you could just color uh tuple to be sorry, if you have a coloring. Mm -hmm. A natural support function would be the support. Yes. Um, so you'd probably. Yeah, kind of how it with cardinality. Then you may have some element that in color you had before, you may add an element. Yeah. 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 I mean, the idea. Uh, I, I wish I had a, a good uh, retort to what you're suggesting, but let's say that, that doesn't work. The thing, the point is, uh, these this these supports. So it's it's not it's not like homogeneous enough. So you have to uh, kind of throw away information. To get this to get a closure operator, which allows you to, yeah. So somehow this this isn't the right this isn't the right structure to have. It's not it's not nice enough, but it still has enough information to to uh, recover a disjointifying closure operator. Um, defining uh, yeah, defining closure operator. So we say B is in closure of A if and only if. Well, uh, maybe the first approximation is say the support if A B is. This is just A union singleton B uh, is contained in support of A. Uh, but this isn't um, on morphism invariant, so I should have written it to make this easier. So for all pi and M. For every pi and not M uh, support of pi b a is contained in the support pi a. Uh, this is uh, clear by how it's defined that it's automorphism variant. It's non-trivial because the supports are non-trivial, um, but just joinifying requires a little bit of an argument. In fact, it's not super easy from the way I define just joinifying. Yes. And the hope was uh, somehow the, the original hope is 
once you have something like this, I get I, I haven't we I should just just to foreshadow something like this is easy to recover from the existence of Borel reduction. Um, so the hope was given such a thing, you can you can go directly to one, and maybe it's possible. Um, Instead, we'll go directly, it'll go through two. So before showing that it's disjointifying, um, there's some uh, equivalent statements of disjointifying that are easier to, to check. I'm gonna call this CL star. This is a specific. Here, the one says, okay, if CL is uh, automorphism invariant, locally finite, uh, yeah, closure operator, the following are equivalent. CL is disjointifying to for all A and B not in the closure of C, exists B prime, the same type over C is B, such that A is not in the closure of B prime C, and B prime is not in the closure of AC. So this is just saying uh, you only need to check with extensions of C by one element. It was just B and C just add a single elements to A. Uh, and the equivalence of this is obviously going to be like an induction on this, the difference between D and A and C and A. Uh, but there's still some, uh, some technical details. And final one, which is the one that uh, most useful here if a is not in the closure of c and Two things hold one, uh, there exists a prime, the same type as A over C, such that A prime is not in the closure of A C, and A is not in the closure of A prime C. And the second thing is for every B, exists B prime, same type as B over C, such that A is not in the closure of B prime C. Okay. So what, what's happening here? So A is, is the same thing as this, except for A, A and B are the same thing. So this this is the same thing as two in the case where A and B are the same element. And then B is the same thing, but you only check one of the directions. Sorry, what's the claim for this second part, A and B? Do they say that suffices to follow this uh, conclusion? Yeah, these are all equivalent. These are all equivalent statements. Including A and B. Uh, yeah, the, sorry, this is part of three. Sorry, this is still part of three. Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, let me, let me, let me, yeah. 
uh, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, briefly explain why the equivalence is true and with a picture. Uh, so you have C, just, uh, just, I'll just draw two briefly. If A and B, and you wanna find some B, prime such that B prime is not in the closure of AC and A is not in the closure of B prime C. This is two. So three is saying uh, two different things. You have to check two different things, two different instances of sort of uh, disjoint amalgamation. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, the difference with three is that you can check first the case where you have just A and C, and you want to find some A prime, such that A is not in the closure of A prime C, and A prime is not in the closure of AC. And the second case, uh, you want to find B prime such that A is not in a closure of B prime C. This, 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 the point is like the, these two problems are both simpler than this one. If you check them both separately, it's equivalent. And I should mention uh, having a closure oper operator that satisfies this, that's the same, uh, such a thing, uh, if it's non-trivial, um, detects the existence of a non-trivial L omega one omega substructure. In other words, a closure property that satisfies this has to extend the, um, the closure property that says uh, that A is an enclosure of C if and only if there's uh, no, if and only if every element, omega one, omega elementary substructure containing C has to also have A. If, it, if you just check, if you just check like this, having this property, it, it, the, the following closure property does have this. It's the one where A is in the closure of B, if and only if, for all N, L omega, L omega one omega elementary subsection of M, uh, if B is contained in N, then, a is in N. Okay, this is sort of finite. So this this closure property is well well known in model theory. There's a pseudo define define pseudo definable closure or something like that. There's some they have a name for it. Um, the difference is to stonifying is this extra this extra uh, um, behavior. Uh, you, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to, B, B prime can be in the closure. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I think I briefly explained how to do this. I briefly explained something along these lines last week, but just, just if we use this closure operator, I mean, it's just, this is just something that's interesting. Like, existence of such a closure operator. Oh, wait. Uh, I was going to explain if you have a non-trivial closure operator that satisfies this, I was explaining how to get a non-trivial L omega one omega substructure. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe it's worth explaining. This is, this is a detour, but suppose you have A, A is not in the closure, the empty set. Then, uh, okay, so now we have some, B and we want to add some something in the orbit of B. We want to find B prime, the same orbit as B, to put in our in our uh, elementary substructure. Well, we can always find a B prime such that A is not in the closure of B prime. So find find B prime and throw it in. And now we have some uh, C. And now we want to find C prime, so the same type as C over B, B prime, such that A is not in the closure of B prime, C prime. And if you can, throw C prime in. And then uh, this, if you can, if you just keep doing this, you eventually build an elementary substructure. It's like, And you, you'll uh, never put a, a in it. So at every, every stage you're ensuring that it's not in the closure of the finite approximation. Um, so uh, okay. hopefully that was somewhat coherent. Um, just to motivate this at least. Okay. So uh, let's see why three is satisfied by this disclosure operator. So I mean, CL star satisfies three. Oh. Suppose A is not in the closure of C. And uh, okay, so that means there must be some, uh, you can assume without loss of generality that the support of AC is strictly bigger than support of C. If not, then fix an automorphism sending it to a place where that, uh, yeah, where that happens. Okay, so now to check A, by, by niceness, we can find, okay, well, first let U be the support of C and V be the support of AC. And then just find a V prime uh, such as V prime intersect V is U. Remember the, 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 the structure supports has no, no structure. So this just means that the cardinality of V minus U is the same as cardinality of V prime minus U. Oh, well, you, you need them to be as joint, just joint as possible. Right. So maybe U is like singleton zero, V is singleton zero. Zero one, and you can find v prime to be zero two. Yeah, just so long as one is not in here. Yeah. Then. 
by niceness, which I just erased, uh, find A prime, same type as A over C, such that the support of A prime is V prime. Right, and then this means that A is not in the not in the closure, star closure of A prime C, and A prime is not in the closure of A C. We just witnessed. I mean, in order for A to be in the closure of A prime C, it needs to the support of this needs to be contained the support of a, A prime C needs to be contained in the support of A prime C, no matter where you move everything. Uh, and and B, B is similar, I, I, I don't wanna. B is similar. I don't wanna get too bogged down and I, I don't wanna bore people. So it could be that Okay, so you're suggesting we can just drive the show two. Show two from the, from the llama. Uh, sorry. Yeah, the problem is, uh, the problem is that, uh, yeah, the, this is a good this is a good question. So why why is it hard to to show two directly? I mean, you could imagine. I mean, I guess this doesn't happen, but you you, you could imagine that uh, you have C this configuration C A B here, or no matter where you move B prime. Uh, Uh, yeah, or even just the support of B prime C is contained in the support of C. Like if if A is not in the closure of C, you can you can move it to a place where the support of AC is bigger. But it could be that the support of BC isn't bigger. And in order to find a situation where the support of BC is bigger, you have to move to another place where maybe the support of AC is not bigger than the support of C. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, take just 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 to show to show this B. I mean, it's it's you can always find you can just you can always find B prime. Such that, such that this uh, intersection of the support of B prime C intersect with the support of A uh, is the support of C. Just by 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 niceness. And then uh, this, the support of AC would not be contained in the support of B, B prime C. 
uh, but showing the other the other direction b not in the b prime not in support of ac is uh, it's not really clear how to do that without going through this uh, this other um, equivalent statement. So I, I explained how to get from nice assignment supports to the joint fine closure operator. So now I'll explain how to find a uh, notion of supports. Uh, so this is the orbit continuity orbit continuity orbit continuity lemma. Uh, it's essentially due to uh, Horth. So this particular statement, uh, uh, so Lupini and uh, Martino Lupini and Aristotelis Panagiotopoulos. So they kind of just distilled uh, some cells of Horth into this uh, This particular statement, which is very useful. And in some sense, it seems like this is the only way to get any interaction be between um, G and H, from Polish groups G and H from some uh, kind of Borel reduction between their actions. But it seems like we're limited to this one black box. So we have a bare mesh homomorphism. Then there exists a Komiger subset of. So, okay, Y is a Polish eight space, X is a Polish G space. There's a Komiger subset such that one F is continuous on C, we know that this is always possible in a bare measurable function. We also have that for all X and C, for almost any, for the, for the generic uh, group element, G, X is in C. And the third statement's a bit, Technical, but it's easy to it's easy to motivate. Oh, that's the um the, yeah. Sorry. So uh, this is where you use like a bot transform to get to. Uh, but three, three is where you see, you see some interaction between G and H. So for every X zero and C, for every V, so this means a uh, open neighborhood of the identity of G, and uh, I'm, it's it's open for every open V. I just won't write open. For every open V, okay, I'll just write open. Exists open neighborhood U zero of X. Exists open neighborhood W with that identity of H. Such that for all X and C intersect U zero. For almost ever for the generic W and little w and big W, F omega X is in V F of X. Okay. So I think you've seen you've probably seen me state this many times. Yeah, there's so many quantifiers. So this is how I uh, this is how I um, visualize this. So first, just ignore this. Ignore you. 
this is, so ignore you. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll write it back in very quickly in a sec. Ignore you. Uh, so this is saying for every, every point in C, think about this as uh, epsilon. For every epsilon in G, it exists a delta in H. Uh, also, forget about this. If you move, uh, if you move x by some delta, you move f of x zero by epsilon. Yeah, some kind of continuity. So as long as you move x only by this small amount, you move f of x by this small amount. And then this u0 is saying that locally to x, x0, the same um, delta works. So as long as you stay close to x0, the same delta works. Think about the space as the product of fluid types. Um, I mean, I'm sure that uh, there's some sense in which I can say yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some way to prove it in, in some kind of clever way using that product space. Uh, the, I think the, the proof it, it's it's not actually hard. It's just basic their category. Um, uh, There's this trick where like you, yeah. that's all. Yeah, I, I I don't know if this is true, but I, I, I'll claim it again. Just it's provocative. It's, I, I think this is really the only known tool to uh recover an interaction between G and H in the um, Yeah. Uh that might not be true, but I mean the fact that it doesn't seem like we're we know of any other tools to me explains why it's hard to uh prove that the general question. Yeah. You have a positive answer to that general question of the beginning. Okay. So how do we use this to get the notion of supports? All right, fix. Okay, so we fix a, a C as in the orbit continuity lemma. Uh, apply. You're in number five of the equivalent, right? So, uh, you're going to yeah. four and five, five, I guess. Um, sorry. yeah, sorry. Where are we now? Uh, so yeah, we're we're applying it to. We have uh, a bare measurable. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the equal plus. Right. Yeah, bare measurable homomorphism equals plus to EGX. And then uh, I'll explain where the supports comes from. And I think I'll have some extra time. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain a, a set theoretic way of, of 
proving this using models uh, without choice. Um, uh, So actually, the first uh, first thing we need to do is instead of equality plus, we we want a different equal insulation. So I'm going to replace this with E H Y. So H is going to be this is the automorphism group of the structure where you you, have, you just have a just a set of Z lines. So there's a, there's a next and previous function, such that the next and previous functions behave as you would expect usually next and previous to get back to where you started and no other structure. So these Z lines, you can move them all around, uh, but of course you have to send one Z line. You can also shift Z lines independently. Um, so this is some. Uh, this is like a wreath product, uh, full support wreath product uh, of us infinity and, and z. I'm not sure if I have the right ordering there. And why? It's just the space of uh, of, assi of assignments. So if we call this thing um, uh, N, this is assignments of, of uh, reals to every element of N. So uh, kind of uh, for we're gonna shift. So odd n acts on, in the obvious way on this space. And I'll explain exactly why we want this like somehow more complicated thing, but th this is not uh, any more complicated than quality plus. And, and the reason is that each real each point, it can enumerate all the other reals in its in its Z line. So it so somehow just uh, if yeah, if you if you. Each, each point can enumerate all the reals. So if you if instead you look at the types of every point, the set of all types that are yield, that appear in here, it's it has the same information as as okay. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, intend to try to explain why this is the other thing. But if, if you don't accept that, it's probably fine. <laughs> So, okay, so we, we, we applied the, uh, we applied, applied uh, or continu continuity lemma to a uh, parameter homomorphism from this thing to EGX and fix X zero and C. And say U supports A if and only if there's a neighborhood U zero of X zero. So set. V A. W W U satisfies uh, three of the the orbit continuity continuity lemma. 
So VA is just the open neighborhood of the identity of the automorphism group of M that fixes everything in A. And this is the same thing but for, for you. That's the stabilizer. Uh, you, you observe if U supports A and B supports A. Then I, I, I don't have time to check this, nor is it like that interesting. The, the intersection supports A. I haven't defined the support of A yet. So I, I first I'm saying what it means to support A, like anything bigger than U also supports A. Yeah, and then, then because of this, then you can define the support of A to be the minimal support. And define. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess that the stabilizer, a stabilizer is, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there, there's a detail to check to see that why the intersection supports A. Yeah, what happens if the intersection is empty? So what does that say? If if you if you and V both support A and they're empty, that means that disjoint. Oh, sorry, they're disjoint. Yeah, it would it would mean that the empty set supports A, and what that means is that uh, it, it would it would mean everything gets mapped to the same uh, the same same point. No, it means sorry. It means that no matter, yeah, it, uh, it, it, yeah. So if you let delta be like infinity, then it's just saying that no matter, no matter what group element, it's still going to be in the same general vicinity. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean that that kind of stuff is possible in a bare measurable homomorphism. Is it? Yeah, it's a bare measurable homomorphism isn't necessarily like behave like algebraically. It's something. That, it's something that can happen. Just that everything gets sent to the same general vicinity, and maybe the complexity in this area is is, is where the complexity is. Support of A is this intersection of all the supports of A. Uh, and okay, niceness or indiscernibility, whichever I should be calling it. Um, that's where we we kind of needed to. Yeah, so, some of the details here I, I, I didn't cover because it it's not really possible. What I actually wrote there is not completely not com completely correct. So the 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 U U should be a subset of Z lines. So say these two Z lines support A if 
for some slash any tuple of points, one from each supports A. Yes, because once if one tuple supports A, then any tuple from the same Z lines will also support A. So it's it's not about individual points, it's about the entire Z lines. And then the point is uh, to get niceness, we need to check that if we move X zero by any any uh, Okay. Yeah, the point the point is that the, these E lines are, are in, indiscernible because okay, if you just look at uh, if you look at R to, R to the omega and S infinities acting on this, you can distinguish between two two reals by like their first element or second element. Like two Two, two reels cannot, can always be distinguishable from each other. We just look at some finite information. But two Z lines, you can't distinguish them because you can distinguish, distinguish between any two points in them, but the entire Z line, it's, uh, it's basically the reason why E0 is not smooth. So, You basically exploit that kind of indiscernibility, or basically, it's the same reason why E zero is not smooth. You exploit that in order to get that this notion of supports is indiscernible or nice. Uh, yeah. I, I think I should uh, leave it at that. Um, If that's not convincing, uh, there's another, uh, just another way to view the situation. So if you have a there are measurable home, homomorphism from quality plus to EGX, fix, uh, fix a co-engineric. Sequence of reals. And look at the Cohen model. So let, let A be the set. So you forget the ordering. And look at VA. Uh, then uh, you can express, oh, okay. So this is actually a, a pro reduction. The situation is more complicated to explain. I mean, just a homomorphism. Uh, there's some invariant for the orbit of x, the orbit of f of x, called b. And you can think of b as the Scott sentence of f of um, x. So you, you first you have to view somehow you have to transform the situation so it's no longer just a general polish space it's like a, a space of structures where you're assigning reals to every tuple something like that which is a common it's this thing you can, you can always do when you have actions of non Archimedean polish groups so we can view f of x as, as a structure and look at a Scott sentence and then we'll get this because a, a and b are definable from each other using only parameters in b. So to V is a model set theory that has like F and everything else. So then you just ask, okay, given uh, Scott sentence, Scott sentence encodes also Scott sentences of tuples, Scott sentence. From a Scott sentence, you can read out the Scott sentences of all the tuples, and you can ask, okay, what is the support of this thing in the sense of like choiceless and in the Cohen model? Which elements of the choice? Yes, yeah, 
but this Scott sentence is in, if you don't have a choice, the law of the Scott sentence is missing, right? <laughs> yeah, choice that, that's a good point. So you need to work with a notion of Scott sentence that where there's no ordering of the conjunctions and disjunctions mm -hmm. completely. Uh, in which case you, you, so in here, it has, it'll have some uh, choiceless, like a L omega, I guess it wouldn't be L omega one omega, it'd be some L infinity omega thing. There's no ordering of the conjunctions, but if, 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 if you forced over the small to make it hereditarily countable, then it would become a Scott sentence. So some kind of potential Scott sentence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even though it's not, you can encode it as an element going to make a sentence necessarily you can still you still have some something which can be forced to 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 be element going to make and then you can just ask okay how much of a do you need to define each each of these it's always going to be a finite uh finite subset of a and a has this like indiscernibility that you can exploit to, to show that this that the support that the support notion that you derive from the situation uh, um, is is nice or indiscernible, whatever. So I think that's how this is how I I proved this uh, in my 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 talk last year. That Jing was present. That's why I'm looking at him. Uh, but I I. I one to sketch the the elementary proof using just bare category in this in this instance. Uh, yeah, so that that's all I, I plan for today. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, all your questions. Any, yeah, any, any other questions? Yeah. Oh no. Uh, I, I define a notion of like supports. From, Support, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, after that you don't need any more set theory. You just do what I did uh, earlier in the. Uh, this once you have a notion of supports, that's nice. You can define the closure operator this way. Uh, Oh, oh, uh, concrete. Uh, I mean, de definitely. I mean, the whole just the, the terminology around support functions is, is inspired from this choiceless, like study of choiceless models set theory. Yep, thank you, thank you.